Phoenix against a safe lane juggernaut. Yeah, that could pose some severe harassment in the lane. Maybe even go for huh. I'm actually thinking Rubik Dazzle with either the X or the Phoenix as an aggressive tri lane might actually be a good plan and leave like either X or Phoenix 1v1. Hmm. Yeah. It's either against a juggernaut or a puck. And if you look at the heroes, X would actually be fantastic against a juggernaut if it's an off lane side juggernaut. And X is also alright against a puck. Five yeah. Seconds. X should be fine, but even though Rubik and Dazzle are pretty good with the aggro try, I'm not sure you really want to go up against an Ancient Apparition Venge try lane. They're pretty... It's possible, though, because you want to give... If you want to give your lanes... It's, def it's definitely possible. I just mean it's not an easy yeah, try lane to go uh, up against. Yeah, obviously it's not easy at all against the Chilling Touch, but it's a possibility that Tongfu can consider because it would give them a very good 1v1 if they want to put the axe against the Juggernaut. That, that lane is very bad for the Juggernaut. It's like a total one-sided lane for X. Yeah. Well, Zai is the one to take the jug. It looks like he'll be headed up top for now. Kuro on the Vengeful Spirit with him at the moment. Puppy is on the Ancient Apparition. That puts Arteezy on the Shadow Fiend. And we'll leave S4 for the Puck, who is headed to the safe lane. Dire side Tong Fu with a five hero invade to get things started. LPC on the Rubik, Axe uh, played by Kion, Zing Q on the Phoenix, U9 on the Troll, and that'll put Kabu here on the Dazzle. We'll see how the lanes settle down, but they're trying to be sneaky here. Winter hiding in the tree line, but S4 with good positioning, has some intel, sees what they're up to, and will be okay. They place down they managed to place down a ward to block the camp here. And it seems like Dazzle is going to stay around with the axe. Oh no, they're actually going to... Mid is a troll. Axe is still here and top lane would be the Phoenix. The so they're going aggro try with the axe. Right, so aggro try axe against the solo puck with a solo Phoenix up top. And that means Secret will need to do some rotations, I would mm, imagine. He's going to just block the creeps from behind. Yeah. Oh, they're going to creep skip. Ah, oh, okay, this is a little different. S4 gets a ward down, so this is uh, Radiant Vision here. Making some ping outs, they know what's going on, and yeah, Kion just goes straight in. But meanwhile in mid, Kuro coming around the side, maybe a courier snipe? Nope, just walks through the mid lane. So this is very interesting from Tong Fu. It does leave Zai with a solo matchup up against the Phoenix here in the top lane. Arteezy against the Troll, and it will be a try on try as Secret rotate their supports down. Uh, Alright, so they have no idea. Okay, they see the Rubik. I was just gonna say they they are not sure if the Rubik is bottom yet, no vision, but now with Axe so far behind, taking out the creeps. Well, Chilling Touch. Here we go, stun comes out, Kuro gets lifted. Chilling Touch doing a lot of damage to the Axe. Orb over the tree line, S4 will jaunt to it. Can they actually find the kill? Dazzle's already used the heal, no grave, and that's it. S4 draws the first blood, and it's a backfire for Tong Fu out of the gate. Now Kabu on the run. Kuro's here, not enough mana for a stun. There you go, he finds it. Orb forward from S4, he won't even need the stun to get the kill. It's a double now for the puck. LPC hangs around a bit too long. It's maybe a triple here for S4 out of the gate. And that's a pause. In a very awkward timing. All right. So not off to a good start for Tong Fu here, Winter. Well, they stole some of his experience, though. I'm not sure if that was the right call. If the X were to be level 2 there, things would have probably been different though and he wasn't level 2 because they were actually taking some of his experience though. I'm not sure if that was actually the right move. Yeah, he still doesn't have Berserker's call. LPC will go down to the orb. A triple kill now for S4 right out of the gate. About as good of a start as he could hope for. <laughs> Halfway to the blink dagger at the 2 minute mark. Of course he will buy boots, but wow. S4 in a, a 1v3 lane turns out pretty well for him. Yep, he actually bought bottle, not boots first. He bought bottle. RTC okay. is gonna send boots towards middle lane. He went with a very, very quick bottle build. So he already got his bottle a while ago, and now probably gonna give RTC the boots first before S4 collects the bottle. And looking at the top lane, Juggernaut should be a little behind against the Phoenix as a melee hero, but he's fine. He's four to eight. It's yeah, I guess it's understandable that he's in a disadvantageous lane. 
Yeah, Phoenix going with the double ring of protection opener. So getting that extra armor. Great build on the Phoenix. Notorious for that uh, zero starting armor. <laughs> yeah. We don't see that build too often. That was one of the things that Envy did. But, um, you know, Necrophos, a couple of key heroes that it works really well on. Jakiro is another one that comes to mind. Yeah, because Jakiro, you would make uh, Tranquils plus... Plus the Bassy. Bassy, and you can you can disassemble the Bassy to make a use later. So both the Ring of Protections are not wasted, basically. Yeah. Value Town. So Secret, group up down bottom. They'll have uh, some bottle love here, and... S4 gets his full bottle delivered. Tonfu still trying to do some creep skipping here. Kian needs to be a little bit mm -hmm. careful. May get initiated on Kuro coming in, thinking about the stun, a little bit of the pump fake, and will not throw out the missile. You know, I think that if they were to plan from the start to do this, they probably should have blocked this small camp, though, since the axe could actually get more farm by having this small camp there. I think it was probably better not to block it if they were actually going to do this from the start if they were planning to do this from the start. Mm. It's quite surprising they actually block it. So now it's a 2v3. The aggro tries turned into an aggro dual lane. LPC rotating towards the mid on this Rubik. Looking for a setup on Arteezy, I guess, but not really an easy angle to initiate here. Arteezy has the lane control with the creeps right on his hill. Not really sure how the Rubik plans on trying to find a gank, and he comes to the same conclusion as he scurries his way back down bottom, but some wasted time here, and... A longer duration that Axe is not dominating this lane. Yeah, middle lane, RTZ. Pushing Yu in line, but taking a lot of race damage. So, and Art Arthur going for that boot split means he's less susceptible to the Harris from the troll, and troll went for the bottle first. So, it's much more difficult for him to run up to the Shadow Fiend and just do some damage to him. And 4 minute rune gonna spawn. <laughs> LPC gonna be taking the bottom one, but or as for. S4. Oh, oh, he gets high ground. That was close. That was I'm close. Surprised he ended up there. Yeah, me too. I didn't actually expect it. It was like right at the edge. Yeah, the he kind of was like in it, and then it was like, nope, you actually belong up there, Puck, and it pushes him over a few units. Ah, unfortunate for S4. Double damage goes the way of the Rubik down bottom. Puppy slowed to oblivion. The battle hunger on top of a poison touch will make him rather slow, and those DOTs get him down to about half health. That actually hurts quite a bit. Yeah, sad, sad life for him. And Rubik with the double damage, trying... Oh, he's going to get Arteezy. Yep, lift back into the lane. Now the Whirling Axe has come down. Arteezy just trying to man up here, do as much damage to U9 as he can. Will definitely fall, or will he? He sips oh. the bottle! Oh my gosh! The troll thought he had it, and he didn't chase. Meanwhile, down it's bottom, Kabu will get caught out. Uses a grave, but will not be able to TP home. That is a big blunder from Tong Fu. That should have been an easy kill. Yeah, it should have been a kill for... The troll just needed to drop one more right click. Oh my uh, god. He got really low. I mean, he was in like almost single digits of HP before he started sipping the bottle. And LPC just making the rotations but not getting the kills there. It's going to be... That's so costly. Very detri yeah, detrimental towards his growth as a support here. Yeah, I mean, you look at the levels. He's only halfway through two. Dazzle has already found the level three, but... Uh, the Ancient Apparition, halfway through three. Venge, just about to be level four. A noticeable difference across these supports already. Shadow Fiend is the last hit leader, though about dead even with the troll. They're within a few last hits of one another. Phoenix getting a lot of space in the top lane and is still beating the jug. Speak of the devil, Supernova comes out. Zai trying to outrange it, and oh, he still... will not, actually. He gets into the fog, and we'll just move around the tree line. Oh, so it'll still be is... okay for now. He went to the wrong direction, the Phoenix. Oh, my. Yeah, he kind of juked him there. He... Nice might, play. might have actually had a chance to kill him because he he had four fresh fire spirits to actually take down the jug. Oh my god. Uh, Alright. Tong miss. Fu just can't catch a break here. A miss opportunity, but... Arteezy though, now initiated on by U9, going for this rune. Arteezy does have a regen, so he'll be okay. Could have made it to the high ground, but we'll just pop it as Troll drops his axe rotation. So four to zero, six minutes in. Six minutes in. It's about a fifteen hundred gold, seven hundred and fifty experience edge for Secret already. Yeah, it's looking very good for Secret at the moment. Zai not not having as much CS as uh, Phoenix, but it's understandable. Yet again, just seven behind. The other lanes looking really, really good for Secret. Bottom lane completely dominated by them with S4 getting that early triple kill. 
And middle yep. lane, like you mentioned, Arteezy slightly ahead of the... Oh, here comes the Axe. Very far forward. Axe on his way in. Arteezy just wants to make it a one-for-one, one, but the call will be there. U9 secures the kill. It's actually the tower that gets credit for it, so maybe a little unfortunate for Tong Fu, but a much-needed kill on Arteezy in the mid. They needed to get on the pod with that. They desperately need it. Yeah. Now they're going to move the axe into the jungle, leave the lane to the desert because there's nothing much they can do at bottom anymore with the axe after the first few engagements. And what they can do now is just hope for the best, try to get the axe blink as fast as they can and try to change the game with the blink of the axe. And at the moment, it's just about reducing their casualties after the laning phase. Yeah. Zai now level 7, uh, 25 CS, not great, but not too bad either, given he did have that solo matchup against the Phoenix. We'll have his Aquila on the way out. So, Omni Slash ready to rock and roll, and can start the team fight if need be. Kuroki on the high ground, early phase boots once more. We saw him do this build uh, maybe three or four games ago when he got that uh, those that early set of kills. But a build he really likes to go for, if possible. Get that early damage, get that movement speed, and run around and play the Venge a little more aggressive than you, you see sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it looks like Phoenix is actually going to get an early Midas. All right. So I'll get those early levels. That's the big thing for Phoenix, the experience, I think. The farm is nice, but hitting that uh, fast level 11 is very helpful. And here we go. Are we going to smoke? Yes, they're going to smoke the Phoenix and the Rubik. Probably going towards RTZ in the middle. Seems like the most likely kill they can actually get on the map. Yeah. Bottom seems impossible because Puck is just a hard fish to catch. So Dyer have not seen Kuroki, I don't think. The smoke coming from behind, though. Arteezy going to be in a lot of trouble. Hit by the Whirling Axes, but Zinke takes some damage as well. There's the Supernova. S4 comes in, gets Telekinesis right away. Now S4 almost in a little bit of trouble. Orbs back. We'll be able to oh. jaunt to it. Whoa! Rubik almost brings him down. 15 hit oh, points. Oh, he got hit by the... Fire Souls. Oh, yeah, oh, 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 Spirits, rather. That was very, very nice play from the Phoenix player, Zinke, there. Well, two for nil in the mid. As Tong Fu strike back. With a nice little gold exchange going their way. And here we go. Midas on the Phoenix. Almost done. 30 goals shot. Nine minutes Midas on the Phoenix. This is a very, very good news indeed for Tong Fu. Yes, sir. So things looking up. We've got an even game on our hands. Zeroed out after that little lead that Secret found for themselves early on. Puppy getting some space in the bottom lane to ding level 6, as is Kabu. It's going to support on support action here. Dazzle going for the Shadow Wave max build. And Puppy actually kind of maxing out the Ice Vortex here for uh, some additional slow and assistance for the team. It's just and trying to get to that Ice Blast. Especially the Puck and the Shadow Fiend. Yeah. And you can use it to even clear stacks, like help the Shadow Fiend clear stacks, if they have actually stacks. Not much stacks actually, for Secret, but... Puppy is going to pop his level 6 fairly soon. That would be really great help for the Puck when he's roaming around the map with the core. Make sure that he can actually kill a lot of the Tong Fu heroes by himself. And... 10 minute rune. Kabu just going to scurry away from RTZ, knowing that he can't take that fight. Double damage rune. Ooh, double damage. Big Shadow Fiend. Ready to hit hard as he farms out in the jungle. So checking in on Zai once more. Has brown boots up. Still not uh, near a Mask of Madness or Phase boots, but kind of the life of the offlane jug. You expect him to be a little bit behind. And not that far away from the axe, actually. Just about 400 on net worth as Keon takes some space in the lane. 1,700 gold on him. Still looking for the Blink Dagger, but a good 500 away. Hmm. Yeah, this is going to be the, to the item they're actually waiting for at this point. Looking at the other heroes, Troll, he actually purchased something, must have died, yeah. Down bottom, Supernova, Puppy, nowhere to go, he'll just burn down to the fire, but they're going to try to turn it around onto ZQ, they get the silence, no Icarus dive away, and he will fall, a one for one, but they trade away their ancient apparition, Shadow Fiend, yeah, he gets credit for the kill, so this time it's a good trade for yeah, he, Secret. He got a streak as well, killing spree. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right, so, even better. All of a sudden, Artur with 1,400 gold. And look at Zai. Looking at Zai at the moment. Power trade is quite a Nothing major Zai yet, but considering the start he had, it's just about Zai what he has right now. Just a trait. Okay, uh, it's fine for him. Kuroki getting some space as well. Has his swap. Level 6 ready. Ancient Apparition, level 6 ready as well. It's a quite a dead even game, I have to say. Swap middle lane. Ice Blast coming in. Kuroki gets the son of a UU9. Gonna get the kill. One more right click. Should 
be enough. He's close. The grade is there. The heal from Dazzle rendered ineffective. But he oh, will not shatter. That was close. The grief. Wow, nicely done. Dazzle ends up dying, though, as Zai comes in. Now Kion possibly in some trouble. Uses the Berserker's Call. Zai's already used the Omni Slash, as we saw. And now on the run with a healing ward in front of him. We'll have support nearby at the low ground. And Tong Fu will not be able to punish Zai's aggressive positioning. Still ends up being a one for nil. They get the Dazzle instead of the Troll. Not the prize that they wanted but a kill nonetheless. Yeah, good rotation from the desert. They're coming in a timely fashion to just bail his buddy out, the troll. Yeah, close call. And that was just the two supports setting that up mostly, though. Nice setup from Secret, though, to coordinate that mm. as Puppy hits uh, level 6. And Shadow Finn by Artis is going to get the use built like most of the Western players prefer this build on Shadow Finn. He's going to be having it fairly, fairly soon. Set up for easy kills on primary the supports, the Rubik or the Shadow Priest. Mm, even to a certain point, he can actually kill the axe or the troll if uh -oh. they don't have enough HP. Here we come. Smoke on smoke, Winter. The secret one's about to pop. Tong Fu, the aggressor's here, but secret have the high ground. S4 with a quick coil on two and a silence. They bring down the Phoenix. Keon still alive, compliments of the grave. S4 isolated on the backside, but Arteezy with a Requiem brings down the axe, finds the kill on Rubik, and now Kabu says, Oh, please, let me live. Not happening. Triple kill for Artor. And a four for nil as Secret get the better of the smoke on smoke action. That could be, that could have turned out as disastrous for Tong Fu as for Secret if they didn't have the high ground advantage there. Yeah. It was just basically they saw Tong Fu before Tong Fu saw them, so yeah. it was just a massacre. And also just fast fingers from S4 right away, no hesitation, coil silence on two, not giving the Phoenix yeah, the chance to go into egg. Bad choke point for them to run up against the yeah. puck and the ice blast. It was just. It was just a very risky maneuver, but at the, yet again, Tong Fu doesn't have vision, so you can't really fault them for trying to run up the ramp. They were trying to get around RTC. Alright, too bad. So Blink Dagger up on S4 following the success of that fight. Big item there, and Zai looks like drums will be his item of choice. So no fast Mask of Madness doing something a little bit different here. Mm, this would give him a lot more fighting power right now and less farming power, so that's... That's really weird. Rules on Arteezy, but gets initiated on. s is there, has a silence. Can Artur survive for now? Yes, he can, but still going to go down. And S4 might also die. Also, he's got a coil and not going to be able to get it off. So it's a two for nil here in the river about the top rune. Secret thinking about continuing on. Omni Slash is available, but Zai will just back off. I'll take that as tribute. Uh, as the defensive weave is basically at max, uh, max armor there. Middle lane. Oh. Going for a uh, conversion onto LPC. Zai gets lifted up, but should still be able to pursue here. And yeah, there's the slow from the low ground, the swap into missile, and they get the pick off. So kind of a one for two, I guess, if you want to lump them all together. Tong Fu, they, they find these decent pick offs. Like they're, they're getting kills on the cores, but when push comes to shove in these big team fights, Secret are still consistently coming out of that and holding on to that gold experience. Nice blast flying through, S4, TP's in, there's a coil, U9 caught in it, doesn't want to break the tether and won't have a choice but to stand there and take the damage. He gets the kill on Troll, now Kabu caught inside of the Yules of Arteezy, buys himself a few seconds but really nowhere to go, has the TP scroll but... Could have TP'd out though, there was no stuns available, no coil. No missile? No missile, yeah he didn't have missile as well, no, not enough mana, Yules was able to could have TP'd out but... I don't think that would have changed the situation too much. It's just a support, but Tong Fu in a, in a big hole right now after the last two engagements. Yeah, RTZ just going straight for the Yule Scepter on the Shadow Fiend. Kind of the, the trendy, a little more gimmicky build right now, but getting a lot of utility Ice blast. out of it. Ice Blast coming out top. Ice Blast is coming top. Uh-oh. No coil, however. Mm, they do have a Requiem, though. What will the Ice Blast connect on? Looks like at least two, both Axe and Rubik, but not in a position to initiate. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Zai just clearing out Ancients. He'll have his drums complete. Another 1,500 gold there. How's item progression on the side of Tong Fu? We talked about Phoenix with the Midas and not really seeing much out of it yet. 1,300 gold, but no item progression. U9 on the Troll. Kind of a mismatch right now. Just a casual Morbid Dark Mask. Light. Now the Ogre Club probably looking at a BKB and the Blink on the Axe is uh, kind of their, their big item now. Also, Peculiar here, Winter. Double urn across their supports. Dazzle and Rubik both with the urn of shadows. Yeah, just miscommunication, probably. You don't really want that to happen. Yeah, very rare to see that. Mm. And 
Bottom rune. Oh, RTZ. Use Booker. Oh, oh, the Spirit Bomb. Easy kill onto U9. Yeah, finishes him off with the Shadow Rays. Yeah, that's the power of the Evil Scepter there. Meanwhile, in the jungle, Puppy initiated on by Zinq, but little does he know, there's support inbound. Gets the kill on the AA, but it will cost him his life. And for the Phoenix, I want to say that that is not worth it. Yeah, here's the call. A is just a support at the end of the day. And Shadow Fiend gets the kill for it. Mm -hmm. So now that's a Blink Dagger on RTZ. Blink use. Mm -hmm. Going mobility, baby. Mobility is the key for the game right now, and they're so far ahead that he basically he builds, anything he builds would be would still would, it's going to have a huge impact on the game. Mm -hmm. It's going to be able to give him a lot of solo kill potential, I, I guess, against all the squishy, squishy supports on Tongfu when he has his ultimate up. Yeah. As four now picks up his power treads, another 900 gold. We'll see what build he wants to go for. Ice Flash just flying around, scouting out that hard camp, and will not connect on any of uh, the Tongfu heroes. Rubik is hanging on to a smoke for now, and looks like they'll save it, moving into the tree line. Maybe they'll try a wrap around a secret. Well, looked like they were going to push the top look, lane, but look at Zion's net worth, by yeah, the way. Zion Kuro back out. Wow, and number two overall. You know, while they've been moving around, while Arteezy's been kind of finding kills and picking these fights with S4, these ancients have been Zai's uh, Zai's bread and butter this game. He's had Kuro just kind of supporting around, helping him. And you see the the difference in the bottom line now. Mask of Madness comes out on Zai after the drums. Drums and Aquila, both very. They're not cheap items to get, like transition items, and he has both of them plus the Mouse of Madness. So 18 minutes, and don't forget, he had a tough time in the lane mm -hmm. against the Phoenix. Yeah, solo off lane. So, great recovery there. Puppy looking at a hand of Midas on the AA. Probably going to have it around the 20 minute mark, about 200 gold short as he uh, does a creep pull here. So, even Puppy doing a pretty good job staying on uh, in safe territory. He's died a couple of times, but has already racked up seven assists. And we've seen a lot of Ice Blast flying around since he uh, picked up the ultimate. Yeah, it's just a very good item for this support. Like, usually you you don't really have so much impact on this support because you can't really farm, and Midas just solves that issue for this hero. And obviously the levels as well is very crucial on A. BKB on the way for Troll. About 500 gold short, but will be a big item pickup for the Dire Side Axe. I think that'll end up being a Blade Mail. It's the casual chain mail at the moment. Uh, time will tell on that front. Secret just out farming him right now, and this is, seems to be the, the kind of usual case for Secret where they end up in these situations where they have decent late game, they're winning the mid to early game, and they have the, the, the luxury of being able to group up and push if they want to be aggressive, or just play it safe, sit back and farm, and kind of feel comfortable knowing that they're out farming their opponents, hanging on to that 7,500 golden experience edge. Arteezy clearing out a nice big stack here as Puppy grabs his hand of Midas. Finally, we'll see the Phoenix. Get an item after the Midas. It will be the Blink Dagger. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Hmm. I'm not so sure with this item though, but yeah. Helps him with positioning and stuff, but is it gonna be enough for the team fight though? That's what I'm not very sure about. Yeah. Arteezy with a double damage rune. Perhaps they're thinking about Roche. Nope, just scouting it out, making sure Tong Fu are not up to any trickery with that troll. But now that Zai is the Mask of Madness, Roche definitely an option for Secret, especially with all this minus armor. They will smoke up in their jungle. S4 in the front lines, not smoked right now. Dyer have absolutely no vision. They don't have a single ward down except the lane ward in the top lane. And Sneaky. not helping them out. So Secret, they just smoke right into the pit. And Tong Fu will not be any wiser, even though they're smoked up themselves. So it looks like Tong Fu seeing them all missing. They knew Secret smoked, but I think they were thinking it would be an aggressive move, not an objective. Oh dear. So that's a, an easy Aegis onto the Shadow Fiend. Oh dear. This is this is such a good move by Secret. Tong Fu already behind. We continue to fall behind. Access is under attack. Got them much done. I have to save with the blink. I mean, is that really the fault of Axe, though? It feels like he had just Radiant hasn't had too many opportunities. Yeah, he's easy targets attack. to kill. With, like, Puppy's just been hiding in defensive territory. After the bottom fight where they ran up the ramp with the smoke, everything just went downhill for Tong Fu. Just one fight like that, it was... Yeah. All the momentum was gone. I mean, even now, secret pressure in the tier 2 mid. They haven't even gotten to the tier 1 up top, and Zai's already here to defend. Secret TP back, or over the ravine. S4 actually comes forward. He jaunts to it. Coil on two, Kabu and Kian. Now the support is here. Omni Slash gets the fast kill on the Dazzle. They get the kill on the Ancient Apparition, but Puppy will still use the Ice Blast. U9 just trying to TP out with the BKB on. 
It will work. Now Zai into the Blade Fury. Keeps himself alive and finds a kill on LPC. Kuro coming forward. Wants another one, but not going to find it. So it will be a one for two. Zai picking up the double. And they only lose their position five. Yeah, it, was a, it was also a 4v5 fight. Uh oh, it's not done yet. Zing Q initiated on by Zai. Swap back. That will keep them alive for now. Zai on the run. Supernova not going to kill him, but that one last tower shot certainly will. Supernova will not stun on anyone. The Icarus dive forward sets up a dunk onto the Vengeful Spirit. Now S4 just trying to make the retreat. We'll be able to jaunt to the orb and lives. So end of the day, it's actually a pretty good little trade for Tong Fu, and they do end up holding the tower. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Two kills and yeah, holding Although the tower. RTZ did get the tier two tower bottom, so all that did not come for free. It did not come for free, but being behind, it's you get still any, good. yeah, it's still yeah. good. You get anything Radiance you want, and they're going to proceed to like, to even get a tier one at top. Yep, S4 on the low ground, K strewn on, classic S4. Coil up in two, just trying to bite his time. And blinks up to the high ground, orbs away, and just timings just don't line up there. A few more seconds on that tower. If only they had the frost armor, Winter. Maybe he could have hopped in with the coil and done something to defend. <laughs> and now Arthur is going to get another stack on this Ancient. He's getting out of control with the farm. And yeah, he's going to go Dyer's for Atwood Blade, I guess, this game. Do you think it'll be the F, F B E blade or just straight butterfly? Yeah, straight butterfly seems more or less more likely. Yeah. But F blade could also be an option here for bursting down targets. They have like ice blast and the ice vortex and the puck. A lot of damage output there coming from those heroes with spell. So F blade. And there's also an abundance of physical damage on Tong hmm. Fu. Probably could work. But Butterfly seems like the more carry type of item. Yeah, I think it's also the item that Arteezy favors a little bit more. You see him go for the fast Butterfly a little more commonly than other Shadow Fiends. Yeah, the timing yeah. that he does. We'll see initiation down bottom. LPC in a lot of trouble. Uh, U9 swapped into an aggressive position. Will BKB whirling axes, but Zai's there with an Omni Slash. Brings him low. Kabu has the Shallow Grave, as well as a defensive weave to give him some extra armor. Now the Sunray to heal him up, and Secret will just back out after a quick pick on the Rubik, but S4 blinks over the tree line. There's a silence onto Kabu, orb away. They'll see if they can find the kill, and they can. Shadow Fiend with a shadow raise from afar makes it happen. Both supports on the Dire, six feet under. Oh, poor supports again. Not catching a break. Two earns a piece, like one earns a piece. Uh, well, nothing going Tong Fu's way so far. Hmm, the Junk is even getting his next item already. He has the Manta almost completed. Dyer's like if you compare his farm at the moment, he's even surpassed the richest hero on Tong Fu, which Dyer's is the Troll. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's actually pretty scary. Invisibility Rune on S4 now, and it is the Butterfly for Arteezy. He has completed it. So, um, pretty damn tanky now with that 30% evasion. No MKB uh, on the horizon for the Dire side. And of course, no hex either. So really, just no tool to deal with the evasion. Agency of the Immortal expiring in about 30 seconds. So Artur not going to be able to make too much use of it, but he's still feeling pretty good. I don't think that'll deter Secret all too much. And S4 thinking about an uh, Aghanim Scepter here and about 200 gold away. Very good against the BKB troll. Yeah, in general, just the stun, the coil snap stun, stun. They can use the swap as well aggressively to break the coil and snap the stun as well with the Axe Scepter form on 5 second duration. Yep. That will be a very deadly combination of spells. You see the CIS teams actually do that a lot with the Puck plus Venge combination. Yeah, we've, we've seen this duo before and it's certainly very potent indeed. And you know, the Puck eggs, you get caught up in the fact that it goes through BKB, but it's also just a damn long stun. Whoa, the fast fingers of Artor. The Berserker's Call will be off the mark. Ice Blast flies through, connects on a few. S4 in the middle of the fray will be forced to orb away. He does actually live. The Requiem comes out. Phoenix and Rubik, the first two to go down. Kabu will grave himself. U9 with no HP left. Off to the side, Arteezy going man mode against the Axe, and it's Arteezy that wins a full five for nil exchange as Secret just wrecked Tom Fu, and that's it. They tap out. No barracks down. They say GG. We've had enough. Off. Secret, your reign of dominance continues. 13 and 0 in this massive group stage. One tower followed only for That is the secret classic winter. They love to defend those towers. Oh.
what a rough game for Tung Fu. Yep. Caw, caw, indeed. The bird was put down. They clipped his wings, and he couldn't leave his cage.